so much for doing this. I know everybody's been waiting to learn more about the Mastery Membership. Yeah. So I've gathered a few of the comments, testimonies from you students. I've taken just a sentence or two from some so I could briefly help describe how transformational and amazingly <laughs> successful your program has been for both horses and humans. So the first testimonial I have tells us about how progressive and holistic your program is. A lot of them are saying how it considers the horse's feelings, emotions, needs, and their opinions. I have one here that it teaches how to understand your horse and provide the learning environment they need to feel comfortable, safe, open to trusting and learning. Here I have one that says it creates awareness, connection, emotional agility, and of course communication. It combines the classical horsemanship, Taoism, Tai Chi. It's offering a complete and well-rounded training system that is spiritually driven, science-based, and classically founded. Here a student says, the solid, connected, and safe riding foundation, it's covering everything needed to develop a horse from the inside out. Emotions, from ground riding to start and finish, rehabilitation to recovery, that's pretty awesome. <laughs> Thanks. It yeah. focuses on creating trust and relaxation, discipline and connection of the mind and physical balance, and of course, self-carriage. Most fulfilling, rewarding, and purposeful developmental system for people and their horses. No bits, uses minimal aids, and works naturally with the horse nature and agility. It's pretty amazing what they say, Caroline. <laughs> Thanks. It teaches you how to get permission from your horse to get on and ride. Here teaches you how to ride on the ground with your horse, aligning and synchronizing your energies, rhythm, and movement together. Develops the movement before you ride the movement. It teaches your horse and the rider how to connect and communicate in mind, thought, and body through energy, flow, and rhythm. Once you have the foundation, you are literally set for life. No more schooling, regressions, or problems. You always move forward. So you call your program the Thinker's Toolbox. What does that mean? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's hard. I don't, there's so many things I can call this program because it, it, it means so many things. And you just read so many of those things from the students' comments and testimonials. Um, the Thinker's Toolbox, it's for both horses and humans. It means I'm teaching people and horses how to think, diagnose, especially humans, how to diagnose. Horses don't know how to diagnose, but to think, exercise your left brain, and learn how to problem solve. So often when we're being taught something, um, it's in small pieces, it's easy to digest and understand, and it's a quick fix. But horsemanship isn't that easy. And most of it is because the horse is such a sentient individual and being that comes with a complexity of emotions and feelings and opinions. And not to mention, they're not just emotionally intelligent, they're socially intelligent. And there's so many aspects to understanding them that are so key. And I want people to think. I want them to, the program is a toolbox. It gives you the tools and the skills and the education and the information. And it also gives you a roadmap. It guides you from one point to the next. And each one of these points or these building blocks is purposeful. You need these building blocks in order to get to the next destination. And let's say that destination is I want to have beautiful liberty with my horse. Well, there's a ton of building blocks to achieving liberty with your horse. There's a ton of principles, so to speak, and building blocks. So it, I really want people to start to think. When you think, you become knowledgeable. You know, you're educated. You become confident. And then you resonate with that confidence. And then the horse is going to trust and respect you more because as a leader in this relationship, 
sometimes you're a partner and sometimes you're leading, you have that level of clarity and congruency and confidence that the horse needs to feel safe with you. I also came up with a thinker's toolbox. You know, it's not the only tagline to represent the program, but the program teaches you how to access and strengthen your spiritual, cognitive, and physical potential. Um, and you need all three of these. Uh, that's why, you know, I combine classical horsemanship with Taoism and Tai Chi. It shows you that there is more than one path to take, and most importantly, it teaches you how to figure out which path is best for you and your horse. And we'll get to um, why this program can work for everyone. But I know just in that one sentence, a lot of people are like, well, you know, how can one program work for all horses and all people? But I kind of just said it. I mean, it's teaching you how to utilize the building blocks and the, the mechanics and the skill and the principles and the awarenesses and the approach that you're going to take and how to use all of that. I mean, that's what I'm using all the time when I work with horses and students. So it's not just the, the mechanics that we have to learn. There's all these other pieces that are so important to figuring out who we are, what our horse needs from us, how to work best with them, how to develop consensual um, partnership instead of you know fighting or making or feeling aggressive with our horses. And then the last thing is the toolbox. Um, you know, my program is like a site map. Its design is intuitive, practical, and organic. You know, how many of us go to a website or go to an online um, training platform? I know we've changed a lot of platforms over the years because they were not intuitive. You get to them and it, then all of a sudden you click a button, and it takes you somewhere else, and then you don't know how to get back, and there's no flow. So, you know, as a former web designer myself, you always want to design something that has a lot of layers and levels and hierarchy to its learning or its um, functionality. You want to design it so that there's flow, there's an intuitive flow. And I do believe that's what my program offers like no other. And my students certainly, it's 100% satisfaction guaranteed. You know, nobody has, everyone has been so excited and, and has had so much success on so many different levels. You know, the spiritual level, the technical level, the skill level, the confidence level, the personal development. So that's where it's like a site map and it teaches you how to use your inherent faculties to guide you you know, um, while you learn how to use the building blocks needed to achieve the results you're looking for. Your Mastery Membership Writing Foundation program, what is it about? <laughs> yeah, it's a hard name. You know, Mastery Membership Writing Foundation program or Writing Foundation Academy. You know, first of all, when you look at the word academy or even a program, basically it means you are studying a specific field or you are learning, specializing in a specific field or study. And so the Mastery Membership um, is all about horsemanship, but it's, multi, it's a multifaceted educational program. So it's offering a complete and well-rounded um, educational training system that is spiritually driven, science-based, and classically founded. Whether it's understanding horses, especially the challenged and challenging ones, starting a young horse, or developing a well-educated and finished horse, the program is comprehensive and inclusive. It includes so many aspects to developing you, your horse. And that's that holistic piece that comes in. We're dealing with the spiritual, the emotional, the mental, and the physical. The methodology to the program, um, to developing horse and rider, includes the teachings and principles of three traditions, and that's classical horsemanship, Taoism, and Tai Chi. When combined, all three practices create an abundant and richly interwoven foundation of knowledge, skill, and personal development. Classical training offers a systematic approach to mastering the art of horsemanship. It's designed to follow a progressive, step-by-step -step improvement training system, and it consists of building blocks, theory, principles, application, and hands-on practice. So that's, you know, that's the, the guts of it, because you're learning everything from how to start a horse or restart a horse, from the ground to liberty to the art of lunging to riding. 
But then it's going to combine this Taoist philosophy, which focuses on developing your mindset, your awarenesses, your intuitive strengths, so that you learn how to develop, cultivate, nurture, maintain the best approach with your horse. And we're always, it's kind of like the Holy Grail. We're always in search of feel and being harmonious. And I love the word consensual partnership because I want my horse to give me permission. I don't want to make or take from my horse. I want them to say, yeah, I'm coming. I'm joining you. I'm going to leave my food. I'm going to leave my friends because you're part of my family and I enjoy you so much. And that's part of that consensual I keep bringing up. And then the third, Tai Chi. Tai Chi includes the mind-body awarenesses and energy practices that I teach that are needed to help the rider and horse learn how to um, move together in rhythm, learn how to self-regulate. That's an emotional agility piece. Um, develop emotional balance and physical balance, strength, straightness, rhythm, and flow. So the program begins with bonding and relationship and shows you how to nurture your relationship through the entire training process. Um, there is no separation between the time to love on your horse and when you have to be a leader for your horse. You're going to learn how they are so intertwined and interwoven, especially the challenging aspects of training and learning. You know, this is so important. We're so used to being taught how to fight or be aggressive or dom dominant or pull on our horses. I think pulling is, as you know, Sabrina, I talk about it all the time in my videos. Um, it's like my biggest pet peeve. We are always pulling, whether it's leading or on the ground or riding. We're just yanking our horses all over the place. And it does so much to them mentally and emotionally. Um, and the program dives in deep. So you really get to understand a, a much deeper level of equine psychology that isn't really being taught out there, um, combined with a spirituality. Um, and then we talk so much about the horse's emotions. This mindset and way of being and doing creates the strongest bond, um, the deepest connection. It, it's all about trust and confidence and respect and partnership, building all of that with our horses. The entire program is designed to include all of these areas while it teaches you a mindful and intuitive way of caring for your horse, handling them and developing, training them. So, you know, it's designed to create an authentic, organic, and effortless learning journey for both you and your horse. I mean, I think right there's a total game changer, and um, it just blows everyone's mind. So that's the hardest piece, and that's the piece that we, we uh, start with in the program is the spirituality of horsemanship, and it's really about you because it's your mindset that needs to change um, in order for everything to become effortless and more resistance-free and authentic and consensual. How or why does your program work for everyone? So great um, point, thank you. Yeah, when I got back into horses, um, I had a business and a company before I got back into horses. Uh, and I bring this up because you'll get where my mindset was. And it was a big learning curve for me being an entrepreneur and owning, de developing my own business. So I had a marketing, um, graphic and web design business, uh, in DC, Washington, DC for many years and building your own business is you got to learn, you know, I didn't go to school for this. I didn't go to school for horsemanship either, but there are so many important things you learn and they're building blocks. And it definitely developed me cognitively in the way that I went about getting back into horses. And why I say it like that is I put myself through college and I loved learning. I love learning. And I'm an ardent student of learning, period. You know that. But I was not a good learner. I suffered tremendously. Um, I could not retain information. I had panic attacks when I would take my tests. I mean, a lot of people understand what that's like and have gone through that. And it really breaks your confidence down. And I didn't realize that when I developed my first business, this marketing firm, I developed it through the love of my craft at the time. I was an artist, a fine artist, 
I got hired to do fine art. Then I started learning the computer and the graphic design programs, and I fell in love with it. And it started to rearrange my mind in a great way. And so when I decided to get in, back into horses and step away from that life and that career, I did it very wisely. And it's something that I hand over to all of my students that join this program is how to become the best learner you can be. And so I take all of that, those learned experiences, developing the first business. And when I started, when I got back into horses, I knew that I needed to study from someone that going around and just picking and pulling from all these different clinicians and trainers and instructors was not the right thing to do. And so I took a two, I took two years to figure out who I wanted to study because I was still very busy, you know, running my own company. And then when I was ready to study with one person specifically, and then it was an offshoot. Then I started studying a lot of other people, but I chose this one person specifically because they had the quickest and best foundation program. Um, I say quickest because it was just it was just several months that I um, was learning with this particular person. So, getting to the foundation. Um, I knew that coming back to horses, so much had changed in, oh my gosh, 20 years. And natural horsemanship was huge. And that's exactly where I wanted to be at the time. You know, I couldn't stand traditional horsemanship. Um, I didn't know that much about classical horsemanship at the time, but natural horsemanship was so prevalent. So that's the path I took. And the best thing that I learned when I went away to develop this foundation of knowledge and skill was how to teach and how important it is um, to, to start somewhere and understand the scope or the depth of the study. You know, horses are a study of what you're studying. And so that became like an offshoot. Like I started, that's when I started to get into classical um, dressage and horsemanship and and studying biomechanics. And at the same time, I, you know, was interested in reining and, um, and team penning and working cattle and just having versatility and obstacle courses. I mean, it, it was like Pandora's box had opened up, but I realized how important it was for me and my horses to be able to do all those neat things. We still needed a foundation, you know, an education. Um, we needed to get to a place where learning was going to be easy for us. And, that's what a foundation gives you. It creates so much knowledge and, and skill sets um, and on an academic level. You know, your foundation could be elementary and it could be um, graduate level. You know, my foundation program is a graduate um, undergrad program, not a graduate, but an undergrad program. And, you know, it, it should take the average horse owner, not trainer, or someone that's had a lot of um, experience with a lot of horses and has been very successful, um, even a com you know in competition. But it should take the average horse owner two years to complete my foundation program successfully because that's what I also learned. It should take at least two years to put a really good foundation on your horse, and and like I said, your horse should be um, able to do. I remember studying with Jack Brainerd. Um, you know, God bless his soul. He's a hundred. He's 100. Thank you for sending me that 100 this year. And it was advanced horsemanship, flying lead changes. And he was just getting into um, Western dressage when I was studying with him. And, you know, I asked Jack, what are the five things that make a, you know, he was a reiner and he was doing the futurity back in his day and judging and breeding. And I don't agree with starting these horses so young um, with the intense work for, for all the right reasons, because they're not ready emotionally, mentally, or physically, they're bones. But, you know, what he said made sense. He's like, you know, we take these horses into a two-year program. And by the time they come out of it, it's slow, it's progressive, it's steady. And, you know, we're always considering where the horse is, um, you know, mentally, emotionally, physically, what it needs. But it still follows the same curriculum because we want all of our horses to know the same things. And we also know that that this is Jack speaking, that the type of, you know, um, 
training system that we use produces an amazing horse. You know, a horse that can go on a trail ride with other horses or by themselves, a horse that can, you know, have self-carriage, pick up a lope or a canner or a gallop and come back down to a walk and be on a loose rein, a horse that's willing to be very versatile and, and try obstacle courses. So it's, a, it's just amazing how much confidence, you know, a program can create for you and your horse and then the sky's the limit. So when I got back into horses and I did my two-year sabbatical studying all these different people, I pulled together, you know, what came so um, intuitive, what was so intuitive for me when I was uh, showing and had my backyard horse, I pulled all of that stuff together and created this, this amazing academy um, method of training. And again, you know, I've been a lifelong practicing Taoist, so I bring in that whole spiritual aspect of, of you know, the biggest thing with Taoism for me is the Wu Wei. You know, we're always looking, or you should always be looking, the Wu Wei is the law of non-action. And you're always looking for the path of least resistance. Um, and this is also in a lot of our martial arts. So how can we learn to work or problem solve or rehabilitate a horse without fighting or making it worse or creating even more stress. And I'm not saying that stress doesn't exist because it's already there, but this program is, it's just so well-rounded. It can address all of those things because unfortunately, when I got back into horses and I started developing this program and taking on every type of horse I could, there was a pattern that I saw and now after working with thousands of horses and students over the years, it's the same pattern. And I say this all the time in all my videos, 98% of our horses are so damaged. Our domesticated horses are so damaged. And before you can even begin to train or retrain a horse, you've got to get enough trust and confidence from that horse for that horse to open up to learn. And this is emotional, this is mental, and this is physical. This is the, the holistic part of the program, the holism. And people just aren't getting that. It's not being taught out there. It's like, oh, do this technique and you'll get this. But as soon as you go to do the technique with your horse, your horse freaks out. I mean, you've been there. Yes. And then you're like, well, what just happened? I had no idea this was like a jack in a box. And now my horse is like flipping out and panicking. And I'm just trying to teach them or accomplish this one really awesome technique that I saw on YouTube. You see, it's so layered. It's like opening Pandora's box. So the program is, it's my apprenticeship program. When I was certifying people years ago, and I hope to do that again, but differently, when I was certifying them, this is the program that they had to learn to help them step back and get to know this horse's nature and their nurture, their learned behaviors, because they're both very different. Most of our domesticated horses have adopted coping mechanisms to deal with so much of the negativity that they, and the pressure that they have had to endure and the abuse and the trauma. And so we don't even know who our horse is. And then we start to go into a clinic. I've been there, you guys. I had no idea that my horses were so messed up until I started taking them to all these clinics. And you're so excited. You think, oh my gosh, I'm going to start learning all this new stuff. And we're stuck. Or we are, you know, potentially getting into a really dangerous situation. My horse is about to explode. So, yeah, many people think programs are like boxes. One size fits all. And I think the public's general association of what a program really is has gotten really skewed over the years, especially with the many competitive online classes and training that's offered today. Um, so much of what is being advertised, you know, it offers a quick route to a destination that deserves more time, study, and practice. And there are so many short eight and 12 week courses these days, not to mention, you know, short how to videos about training and horsemanship, you know, each promising you that you'll achieve what they're promoting, but it just doesn't work out that way for all the reasons I just said, because you really don't know who your horse is. And my program is going to start you there. So, you know, learning takes time and learning to train takes time. The great masters understood this and so do our current top horse professionals, the elite group of trainers who have produced finished horses. 
They understand the time and education each horse needs and deserves. And my program teaches you and your horse how to enjoy the learning process. That is so key. So what makes this program work so well and for all horses and riders is the way it's designed. It is universal and applicable to any horse and rider, style of riding or discipline. It achieves this by producing a well-rounded, versatile education that promotes confident learning. It's motivational and it inspires you to keep growing while gaining new insights and skills. It's motivational to both you and your horse. Even if you are a solid second level dressage rider, you can enhance your skills by learning how to ride this way. And learning how to ride this way is riding bitless, training bitless, riding bitless, learning how to really develop an independent balanced seat with just a bareback pad, and learning how to teach your horse, train your horse through subtle mind-body communication and aids. An example would be um, teaching my horses how to do lead changes, both simple and flying. <clears throat> and this is something I've designed on my own through a blend of studying classical horsemanship, learning, reining, learning competitive dressage, which I really don't like at all. So I develop all my horses on the ground. All of their movement is developed on the ground first. So they're gonna learn how to balance themselves and develop the strength and self-carriage in the different gates and transitions so that they can do a simple change and a flying lead change in a figure eight pattern on the ground. So the program isn't just a foundation course um, to help you learn how to develop your horse from A to Z, it is that, but for competitor, Com, you know, competitors or anyone specializing, let's say in dressage, it is an amazing enhancement to what you already know. Because how many of our competitive riders are even allowed to ride or train without a bit? But how many can get the same beautiful movement and response from their horse riding bitless? How many riders? at more of a professional level, know how to ride with just a bareback pad. And I don't mean ride clinging to your horse with your legs, but developing an independent balanced seat as a rider, and then learning the Tai Chi aspects of the, the subtle mind-body communication and aids. So an example would be um, both on the ground and riding, I develop all my horses, just like classical dressage, the great masters, I develop all my horses um, movement on the ground first before I ride the movement. And an example of that would be um, upper level, uh, the pee off, uh, your shoulder in, your in hand work, and then simple and flying lead changes. And so I want my horses to be obviously balanced and strong. Um, balanced emotionally, mentally, and physically. I want them to be straight and strong, develop self-carriage without a rider. And then we're going to take that elasticity of the movement that we're creating, you're going to learn in the program, on the ground, and then we're going to start playing with it. Um, this is more advanced, but you're learning all the building blocks, the foundation of how to take that and play with it massage it so that you can get your simple and flying lead changes in a figure eight on the ground. And there's nothing more exhilarating than being able as a rider to learn how to ride that movement um, in a bareback pad, bitless, but also to understand the biomechanics of how you, your body influences the horse's movement naturally, either positively or negatively. So when I go to refine the lead changes under saddle, riding in a bareback pad, my horses are so tuned in to me and moving with me on the ground, because that's what I'm teaching you in the program, and embodying that rhythm and that energy, that we become the centaur. And so when I lift my body subtly, because you won't see it, it's that subtle. So I lift my body into the lead change, it takes my horse into the lead change. So there's no you know, kicking the hips over and twisting your horse all over the place because some of the, the fundamental principles in classical horsemanship and dressage is straightness training. You don't want your horse to be pushed and crooked 
um, or falling in when you are going around circles or doing more advanced lateral movements. So it's really cool how it all is intertwined and that's where a more professional, skilled, advanced rider can take the program and just fly through it. And it's just going to enable them to get away from bits, really learn how to ride, create this amazing harmonious flow with their horse, mind and body and heart. It is tremendous. So the program is 12 courses all together. It's tremendous. The first four courses consist of the core curriculum, offering hundreds of step-by-step -step video lessons and hours. You also have supportive written material in a tutorial or a workbook. You have practice sheets and recorded Q&A webinars. And the webinars are phenomenal in that they are designed um, specifically for the private Facebook group. Some of them are two hours long. I used to do them every week. We've created a table of contents so new members or even old members can go back and, and re-watch and re-listen because they're so powerful, the Q&A. And we dive in deep um, in the community, especially the spirituality of it and the personal development part and peace, which is in the first course. So in addition to the first four courses, because there's 12 total, we have all these mini courses. Um, you've got unedited clinics. You've got my writing is one clinic. You've got my connection communication workshop. You have mini courses and supportive, more supportive reading materials. Um, and then you have this big course that's devoted to problem solving strategies. So as you're studying all these lessons and you might hit and get hit roadblocks and get stuck, you can go to the third course and you can find some of the answers, like how do I learn more about my horse when this specific situation arises? So we dive in even deeper. So each of these courses, these lessons, they support the student's journey with their horse while they're developing all the core areas needed to have this amazing relationship and ride. So there are so many different programs out there today. How is yours different or better than the others? <laughs> uh, I think I've probably answered that, but I'll try and sum it up. I think to start off with, the way I combine all three methods of classical horsemanship, Taoism, and Tai Chi. You know, there's a lot of older um, clinicians out there that are, you know, coming out with their online material as well. There's new um, clinicians coming out. You know, we're all kind of saying the same thing. And I know it gets confusing. You know, everybody wants connection and relationship and, um, you know, this amazing partnership with their horse. And we, we want to use positive training. We want to, um, we want it to really, we want a happy horse. And, and I think it's great. You know, I, we, there's definitely a spiritual shift in horsemanship there. It truly is. I was one of the first that came out with spirituality of horsemanship back in 2009. That was the first year that I became a clinician at some of the major horse world expos in our country. And I was the only one using spirituality at the time and really diving in deep with how to attain that. And that's where this program originated. This is the beginning of the program here. So, you know, I combine all these methods. You know, I have a lifetime experience in Taoism and this, the Tai Chi. And, you know, I don't know how many people really can offer that. A lot of people can steal language and take someone else's thoughts and make them their own. But when it comes down to it, how many people really know this work like I know it? I think that's a big differential factor. But unfortunately, until you experience them or me, you're really not going to know. So I often tell my my students who question, ask this question, that's why we're bringing it up, to go look at my YouTube channel. I think it speaks for itself. I don't really know of anybody out there who, anybody I don't know, who can show the depth of relationship and love and consensual partnership that I do with all the horses that I, I, we videotape on a weekly basis. So I think that's the, that says it all right there. You know, not only is it one of a kind, its core teachings center on the areas that are fundamentally and intrinsically important to all people and horses. 
You know, I've carefully designed the curriculum, the training system, so that it includes the core elements needed for both horse and human to develop emotionally, mentally, cognitively, and physically together. You know, there, there'll be autonomy, but you always want to come back together and do this work together. Um, that's what makes it holistic, inclusive, and work for everyone. We have so many testimonials from students that have come from all over the world. They're up on my YouTube channel. And it blows, it's mind blowing. It's a total game changer when they come here and they actually get to experience um, what they see in the lessons and on YouTube, they get to experience me and my horses. They get to experience my horses and it's magical. I have students that have studied with some of the best of the best out there and they've come to me because there's always something missing. And I think I'm providing that Definitely. So the way I teach, <clears throat> that's going to be another big differential piece to this. And I talked about being an ardent student of learning in school, but not a very good learner. And so I've taken a lot of time to develop, not just studying humans and myself and, and how I can become a better learner, cognitively brain games, but also the horse. So I've put all this into the program. So the way I teach um, people how to learn and horses, how to teach them, how to teach their horses, how to learn. That definitely sets me apart. I bring various forms of learning styles and brain games that I call that strengthen and challenge horses and people cognitively. So these styles not only create better learners and problem solvers, they also create a deeper trust and confidence between horse and human and within themselves. So this is achievable because the process or journey that I'm setting up for you um, goes slow. It's very thoughtful and mindful, and it allows you to evolve organically and naturally. And that's a big thing that I'm teaching you is how to slow down, be mindful, pause, you're smiling. <laughs> And even when the students are, think that you know, you're slowing down when we get to our webinars, they're like, oh man, it finally hit me again, Caroline, after three or six months, and I went back and reviewed. We get this all the time, don't we? And I slowed down, and it was a huge aha moment. It changed everything. It's not about the technique. It's really about that relationship and journey together. Thank you so much. Your writing program is amazing. I love it. Everybody <laughs> loves it. And... I want to really know more about the spirituality inspired part in the Taoist philosophy. And so many of us. I know. know I was going to say, yes. <laughs> so, I mean, you get to work yeah. with me all the time yeah. and we get to talk about this, but it never ends, does no, it? It, it never ends. No. It, it is. I love it. It just never ends. Well, we all, y'all know I'm a practicing Taoist. So I believe in following a spiritual path and practicing a spiritual lifestyle. What this means is I already brought up the woo-wee. You know, how can we, Taoists believe in two things, predominantly two things. And this is what's in my program. Harmony, how to find harmony in everything you do. And so that relates to the woo-wee. How do we go through life without being confrontational, aggressive? Um, how do we go through life finding the flow. So, you know, I strive to find union, harmony, and balance every day with everything in my life, especially my horses. So the Taoist beliefs are included because they support my belief that horses are sentient beings. And when training, we should find the path of least resistance instead of fighting with them all the time. And that's so hard intrinsically for human beings. It's just not our nature. So I've been in Dallas since high school. When I started learning this way of being, it changed my life completely. I went from acute panic attacks and total emotional debilitation to a spiritual calm and confidence I never knew before. I had a backyard horse at the time, Brandy, who was also positively affected by my newfound awareness, my calm and my confidence. So the transformation was so big and powerful, I vowed then at the age of 15, that I would share this so I could help others find their way and feel this way. So the program spirituality is rooted in Taoism. 
The Taoist and Tai Chi teachings, philosophies, and practices I've learned over the years are intricately woven within the horsemanship curriculum and lessons. While the lesson might be about teaching your horse a specific skill, it is deeply influenced by a spiritual approach and mindfulness. So I have a whole course dedicated to this. It's the first course, um, discovering the spirituality of horsemanship and learning how to become one with your horse in mind, movement, and relationship. So this course teaches you, the person, how to achieve a greater connection, an authentic, congruent connection to your horse, but life in general. Um, how to develop and, and increase your awareness of your inner world and develop a willingness to let go, trust the process, and go with the flow. These elements and increased awarenesses are so important to our relationship with ourself, others, and our horse. So Taoism for me is not a religion. You know, it's really no one's business, but people ask me all the time. I was brought up Catholic, but I am a Christian. But I follow a Taoist philosophy and spiritual lifestyle. So Tao means path or way. And that's what the program is all about, to show you a path in many ways to reaching a specific goal or destination. That's that thinker's toolbox I, I was talking about. So Tao can also um, be interpreted as the road, the course, or the conduit. Again, that's the program. The Taoist principles that are taught in my training system teach people how to find harmony and flow in everything in life. So Taoism also relates not just to harmony and unity, but complementary forces, the yin and yang. And this is really interesting because they're opposites. And here we have love and leadership. To me, that is so important in life and in our horsemanship. And, and so many people have such a hard time loving and being a leader, asking and doing. How do you weave the two together? You don't have just one or the other. How do you be a leader that is loving and thoughtful and adaptable and flexible? So Taoism also emphasizes naturalness, simplicity, a lack of selfishness, and often it is helping you to learn how to not have so much emotional attachment to a specific outcome or goal. It has also been called the flow of the universe with the goal of having your will in harmony with the natural universe. So Taoism always seeks harmony, as I've already mentioned, and believes that everything is made of energy called ki. Taoists believe that the energy needs to move constantly and that blocked ki causes illness. Tai Chi moves and unblocks the key and moves it around the body. The result being better health, both internal and external. So this is where and how I begin teaching about the chakra system and how the energy work in my program will assist in creating emotional agility, balance, well-being, fluid movement, and harmony. Tai Chi draws upon the Taoist principles of yielding, softness, slowness, balance, and it's rooted in movements that are attuned to health in martial arts or applications. So the names of many movements depict the principles and appreciation of nature. So this is really cool. Some say Tai Chi movements are an attempt to mirror nature's ways. I agree. Let's consider that slow flowing movements certainly look effortless, as does water moving in a stream. Water can, however, wear down riverbanks, rocks, and stones over time. This is a good example of the yin and the yang, soft and hard. Soft can often overcome hard by slow and consistent effort with little to no obvious force. It's pretty profound. Wow. That is very <laughs> well thought out. Very deep. I can't remember anybody that does what you do. It's a, like a form of existentialism, where we explore the meaning of existence through how we experience thinking, feeling, being, and doing. 
there's another big difference between you and everyone else. Do you agree? <laughs> yeah. It's how you teach consensual partnership between horse and human. I remember about 12 years ago, I was watching you on YouTube, and there was so much love, connection, trust, respect, joy between, and that's so amazing. Oh, you make me cry. Yeah, that's the consensual partnership video <laughs> that we created back in Pennsylvania. Yeah, with Smokey when he was alive. Yeah. Yeah. It... Oh, wow, that horse taught me so much. Mm. You know, Smokey came to me. I was his seventh owner, and he was just turning five. And he, you couldn't ride him. You couldn't catch him. He, you couldn't touch any, couldn't even be around his face behind him. And he was the first horse of mine that I got back into horsemanship with. And, and I was like, oh my gosh, I've got to, I've got to go find somebody to help me with this horse. And what a disaster. Everything that I was being taught until I went, um, away for a while and, and learned that one specific, um, program. But everything else was just all force or operant conditioning. And even if it was natural horsemanship, it didn't work. And Smokey taught me, Smokey taught me, so did Sundance, what it means to acquire and gain consent from your horse. Because Smokey busted me up and I had to rethink and it was an aha moment, rethink, because everything that everybody else was teaching me was all about desensitizing. It was all pressure and release. And it was horrifying. He, I mean, this poor horse was so damaged already um, through traditional round penning and lunging and riding and bits and saddles. Um, nothing worked. And so I got hurt. It was a huge wake up call. I was trying someone else's method, trying a lot of different things. And, but getting hurt made me stop and listen and listen to my horse. And it wasn't just Smokey. I had Legend and I had Sundance, the Trinity at the same time. So it affected all of them. And listening was what created the ability to, for me to learn how to ask for permission and, and it's in the program. How to, you do not get on your horse for a ride until you get permission. But when your horse is so connected to you on all these levels, the ride is always there. You go stand up on the side of the fence. You go stand up on the mounting block and they come and pick you up. I mean, we show this in so many of the videos. And when you get on, you know, or before you get on, they wrap themselves around you. They're so careful with you to take care of you, to protect you, to make sure that you're safe. I mean, it doesn't get any better than that. So yeah, the program's going to teach you all of these things. And that consensual partnership in riding is what creates the ultimate safety. So many people ask me all the time, why don't you ride with a saddle or a bit or a helmet? And I'm like, because I'm not going to ride a horse that doesn't give me permission to get on. And by the time I have permission to get on, all about 75% of our riding is already created through the ground work and the art of lunging that I teach you. So all this connection, mental, emotional, spiritual, um, everything is already almost there. You're just taking it, now transferring all of that to your ride and refining it. And at that point, all the horses that I've rehabilitated from rearing and throwing people, you know, off of them and bolting and bucking, we resolve all of that on the ground so that by the time I get on, that horse trusts me, that horse wants me, that horse is thinking about me. And there might be, there will be some slight residues of um, trauma and triggers, but it isn't anything that we can't have a connection in a conversation about. And that's what's so important is teaching you to slow down enough to pay attention to when your horse is like, hey, I'm having a hard time with this. Don't push me. I've hit a threshold. That's a huge awareness. That's another huge area that keeps people safe 
So it's not just about creating a safe horse. It's about making you think about how to stay safe. Yeah, that, that makes a lot of sense. And I think that's where we all want to be with our horses and training. Well, you've got your two, your three-year-old now. You're, we yeah. filmed her starting the young, challenging you know, horse. And you're developing it through the program with her so that when you're ready to ride, I'm not ready to get on my three-year-old either. Yeah. I don't think it's right. No. He's not ready um, mentally. I'm not in any hurry. He certainly isn't ready for anything intense physically. But we want that permission. We want that. Mm -hmm. And you know what it looks like. Yes. Yes, I absolutely do. Yes classical approach to riding. Can you explain how you train following that method? Yeah. Yeah, um, it's important. Yeah, I think it's important for viewers to understand how vast and co comprehensive your techniques and skill building lessons are when it comes to groundwork, riding, and your lunching. I don't want anybody to think that you're full of fluff. <laughs> That it's all foo, woo wooey yes. and, and esoteric. Um, very talented. Yeah, and down to earth, and, and there's so much common sense. You know, that's a key word a lot of people say about my my approach. There's a lot of practicality, a lot, a lot of common sense. Um, a lot of time I've spent studying biomechanics, you know, whether it's the art of lunging or riding. And so that's where the classical horsemanship comes in. And the classical riding focuses on the classical school and teachings of dressage. So the word dressage means to dress or prepare the horse. Um, and that's what my program does. It prepares both you and the horse for everything. And all the way up to second level dressage, bitless and bareback. So classical dressage is the first discipline ever and evolved from cavalry movements and training for the battlefield. So it dates as far back as 430 BC and by a historian and soldier named Xenophon. He is best known for his training of horses through patience, kindness, and reward. And the pieces that they've put together of his writings is found in his, um, of course, he's not here anymore, but found in his book, The Art of Horse Horsemanship, or the, yeah, The Art of Horsemanship. So his principles combined with other great horsemanship masters, such as Groener, Oliveira, and the Dorrance brothers, they contribute to the core teachings, principles, and foundation of my method. So that's where I'm self-taught. You know, when I wasn't happy with what I was learning in the natural horsemanship arena, um, you know, uh, gosh, not at all. It was very elementary, and there were a lot of missing pieces, and that was where what they were teaching at the time definitely wasn't working for me and my horses. Um, especially the rehabilitation. None of it was helping my horses um, rehabilitate because they were so damaged. So it was when I got back in, you know, to studying the more classical approach and reading and then breaking down what I was reading and breaking it down and taking it out and studying my horses, you know, bit by bit, piece by piece. So that just blew my mind because I really had such a deeper appreciation for building blocks, truly. So the great masters, you know, from the Dorrance brothers to Nuno Oliveira, um, their way of understanding and developing the horse involved patience, mindfulness, feel, timing, and depth. And the depth was in their ability to understand, take the time to understand and study the horse. Depth in relationship, movement, um, the level of education and study that they themselves undertook and then they expected their students to participate in. So dressage is the foundation of all riding disciplines too. And when done correctly, it teaches you the basic building blocks to developing, problem solving, and finishing horses. So my program does that and so much more. It provides you with the most comprehensive education in horsemanship the art of riding while developing both you and your horse emotionally, mentally, and physically, because we have my styles of the art of lunging. My, we have my liberty work. I also follow the lunging and in hand principles of classical dressage, where we develop collection through straightness training, balance, and strength. So the big difference with my method is I train with minimal aids freely at first. I don't use bits. Um, you can train all the upper level movements in any discipline without a bit. 
So I teach you all about the biomechanics and how to develop self-carriage naturally, slowly. And um, all of this helps to create a balanced ride, both emotionally and physically. So last but not least, you learn liberty. This is huge because liberty in everything you do with your horse, from grooming them, asking them to come out of the stall, stand at liberty to be groomed, fly spray, bathed, tacked, walk out together to your workspace, playing and riding, bridalist. So liberty is a choice. Yep, and it's the truest test. Like when I get done schooling my horses and we could have been doing some really intense lead changes or lateral movements, you know, and I'm like, yes, that was fabulous. And I'm hugging them. I jump off, I take their bitless bridle and they stay right with me. And we walk back to the barn together. They are caught up in that joy with me because the joy is there in the work. So the program sets you up so that you are always working towards liberty, choice, conversation, authentic connection in everything you do together. So some might ask why this is so important and the answer is Nirvana. I think all the students that I've worked with over the years that have achieved this, I mean, that's pretty much what they say, isn't it, Sabrina? It is Zen. It is Nirvana, a state of complete harmony and bliss. And isn't that all what we want? Yes, ma'am.